I need to tell ground right now. <laughs> oh. Oh, what's uh, this? Oh no. Uh, skip its content. I don't know what this is. <laughs> to credit to yeah, let's go. posted it, so I'm kind of weary about clicking on it actually. Just <laughs> because it, I posted it, because yes. that's probably why. Just because of you, just because you posted it, I'm a bit weary. But no, then, it's it's a picture of. It's this guy from the pro wrestling world saying, SMH, tired of all these Undertaker return rumors bullshit. I'll just go ahead and say it. If Undertaker returns tonight, I'll suck every person's dick on this page. Now please shut the fuck up. Hashtag, you're welcome. Uh, sorry, I didn't know he, Gamebox went live as you were reading that, but yes. I am down <laughs> with the Dane Silent Bob clicking of that. <laughs> what the fuck you waiting for? Start sucking! I love that's that's pretty good. Okay. Can everyone hear fine in the stream? I, oh. Well, I think it's me, you, Sec, and Ralph right now. Okay. That's uh, a that's uh, a good group so far. I'll and copy. The imitation dude just or Viney imitation dude just came in too. Hold on. Let me um Someone's playing Sonic. Well, I'm, I popped in my Sega CD and I'm playing uh, Final Fight. Ah. Uh, what the? Because all my Genesis controllers broke down, but then I started looking under my bed and I found one. It's this old custom-built arcade stick that I had never finished, and I decided to just finish it up while I had the chance, and now I have a working controller. Uh, it's gigantic, and it's heavier than... My cat, but did you um? Sec, uh, you're into Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Did you watch the Evo stuff at all? I I did not. I did. I haven't had the chance to. Well, who do you think won Evo? Probably Sonic Fox. I'm going to just yeah. take a guess. Sonic he Fox is fucking destructive. He's all yeah. Best. He was in the losers brackets. And it came down to him and a foxy grandpa in the finals. Nice. And, like, it wasn't a complete body because, like, he won the first round. Or, well, he won the loser's brackets. And then Foxy changed it up to um, Buzzsaw Kung Lao. And started oh. bodying, he started bodying Sonic Fox. And then Fox changed it up to Katana. And then it was just... Or no, he changed it to Aaron Black, and he, oh. just, like, he bodied him so far. Yeah, like, Sonic Fox has been experimenting with Katana quite a bit, but like, once he just jumps uh, on fucking Aaron Black, it's done. Yeah, like, his Aaron Black is, like, that's what actually landed him in loser's brackets with his Aaron Black. Yeah. Like, he, he just got bodied, and then fucking he just comes back. Because you know how it works, where if you're in the losers, you gotta um, you gotta win three out of five to get out of that, and then you gotta win another three to actually win the entire tournament. Yeah, and then just all of a sudden, it's just like, he fucking bodies everyone. Yeah, I, I mean, I watched what, Sonic that, Fox's ship because Sonic Fox is one of my favorite. He's like, just he's one of my so favorite fun, players. To watch. He's fun to watch. Yeah, that, like shit. He's younger than I am, and he's like ten times more talented. It's incredible. I'm like, half I'm jealous, but I'm half proud. Yeah, like I'm terrible at most. fighting games, and then just watching him just body people. <laughs> Pit's like, hey, oh, I'm man. in here. <laughs> oh, Pit just <laughs> Pit does. Does. ah, it's Mr. Res the Clown. Oh, Pit is Pit. No, I'm not. Stop. Stop. No, I'm saying Rez yeah, I'm clones here. in the chat. No, I'm Pit. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I know Rez is in here, but then Gamebox mentioned Pit was here, so. Yeah. And that's Pit. Yeah, I'm fucking here. You so, don't get me and Seth are discussing our Mortal Kombat. Sec, did you see the Tremor gameplay? Of course I did, and it's. He looks. I won't repeat amazing. what I. I won't repeat what I said on Twitter, but let's just say, uh, 
<laughs> He's getting a little tribute tonight. Tremor looks fucking amazing. I know. The model looks so damn good. Like, even his interaction that they showed with Kung Lao, it was subtle, but it was amazing. Ah. Uh, I just want rain. I just want rain back, please. Oh, I think I rain will be in the next DLC pack. Let, after. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Let me put it this way: After um, Tremors trailer, they put in um, "Who's Next" again, and apparently, in the comic, Reiko just got a new outfit and is now a major player in the story. Long well, story short, we're probably gonna see Reiko. Reiko's always been a major uh, player in the story because if you. If you pay attention to the story mode, it's all about the Reiko Accords. Yeah, but like now he's, he's just, like, you know. As soon as Shao Kahn got bodied, Reiko came in and was like, yeah, this is how we're doing shit. We're making yeah. some fucking changes to all this, and yeah. I'd be cool with Reiko as long as they make him cool, I guess. I think they will. I'm pretty sure they're going to do something awesome with him. Huh. I'd be fine with that. Okay, so Battleground. Um, I watched a little bit of this and that, and then I went to bed. And then I woke up, and I got a text from one of my friends saying, Oh, hi. Uh, spoilers, by the way. Taker's back. I'm like, oh. All right, so then you have no inhibitions about me going full force. Go right ahead. Uh, I get Before a you start, there's a tweet that I want to read out that I think was pretty great, but I gotta remember who it was from first, so... Uh, one second. It was by Eddie. Oh, wait. Uh, go ahead, uh, Go ahead. Oh, okay, like I Eddie found it. Oh. No, I not that one. They you can't can really eat shit for that. Here, you yeah. can eat shit for that joke. No, it's from Drake Ber It's from Drake at Drake Bergen 13. The Undertaker is like my dad when I was a kid. He shows up every once in a while out of nowhere with a gift and expects me to like him again. Aww. <laughs> I, I kind of want to give this him a hug. <laughs> um. By uh. By the way, Pitt, we uh. We can barely hear you because of your phone and yeah. everything. Yeah, so if you can oh. find a way to turn up your voice or something, that would be... You know, turn it up, make some noise. x Break the noise! <laughs> Sub Zach. Break the noise! What to do. Dun, dun. Think you could tell me what to wear? Dun, dun. You better get ready to us. Degenerate, it's a fucking... The Just king of rock, will you? Tell me what you do me to do. Yeah, that's a price, boy. Yeah. Rez wants the to DX get man. into talking oh, about sorry. Rock. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, the Degeneration X Band, it's like Rage Against the Machine light. Well, I mean, even Rage Against the Machine is Rage Against oh. the Machine light, depending on what the fuck they're doing. America, 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 well, dude, America. That was, that was the chance going on in uh, Evo for MKX because the top three, there was a dude from Canada, there was a dude from uh, the United States who won, and it was a dude from uh, the UK. USA, USA, USA. That's what it was like. Everybody there, everybody in the crowd was from the United States, so they're like, "Fuck it, I don't care if this dude's a furry or not." They wanted this. Sonic Fox to fucking win, uh, dude. It, like, you didn't watch yesterday either, did you? I just said, been a little busy with shit. Well, sadly, yeah. Yeah. I I feel that, but like, there was a point because. For the most part, yesterday sucked balls when it came to the MKX shit. Yeah. But Sonic Fox and, like, one of his dudes who was wearing, like, the same thing he was, but it was yellow, so I guess it's, like... Tails? Tails, yeah. <laughs> they were just, like, <laughs> laying in the aisle, just chilling, talking about something. I don't know, but I just like to imagine they were like, so when do you think a torrented version of DBZ... Resurrection of F is going to come out where it's not the Spanish d 
dub, but it's the Japanese dub with American subs. They're like, <laughs> nah, I don't know. Oh, by the way, I just put up a poll for uh, how you felt about the pay-per-view. Mm. We got uh, poll, huh? we got one man back because I spelled band oh. wrong. <laughs> uh, two live crew, three, okay. uh, four horsemen, and the four horsemen. <laughs> and, and I got till five. Actually, it you is. know what? I when I saw three, I, you know what I thought would have been a better option. Did I just hear someone say three, three minutes? minutes? Yeah. But I, I I honestly have to go with the Four Horsemen because up until the finish of the main event, it was really good. Really good. But then, like, that finish just ruined the entire fucking thing for me. Mm. Um... Roman Bray was fun, apparently, to RKO Anthony. Yeah, well, he's a cunt, so... Oh, I don't, wow! I'm, I'm just saying that because I wasn't there for the thing. I went to a store to get more beer. So, I mean, he could okay. be right. I heard it was actually pretty decent. So. Um, I'll, I'll face, what type of beer did you get? Bud Light. Make it a Bud Light night. Bud Light night. Ah. I have a thing called a yeah. uh, Coney Island root beer. Hey, you know what? The, heard of it. I'm gonna join in on this joyous occasion. Allow me to go get. Clo or I almost said Klonoa. Yes, I'm just going to drink Klonoa. Some thank Klonoa. you. Okay. Well, Klonoa. Well, you don't make any yellow Russians. Oh Jesus! I'm gonna get some uh, Kahlua and shit. Is is that just called an Asian? Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hey, did wow. you watch uh -oh. Giant Bomb? Wow. Do you watch Giant Bomb at all? No. Sadly, no. All right. Well, they did this thing. It was a a big live live event, and they did this taste test to see if anything tasted better with nacho cheese, because apparently Oreos taste way better with nacho cheese, according to this one guy. That's a part of their thing. I don't believe it. Uh, well, I mean, they dug on it and they loved it, so I can't say. I've never tried it, whatever. But then they did, uh, on this specific stream, they did, like, uh, Tricks, the cereal, with nacho cheese. Really? And they didn't like that one. They did, uh, this chocolate pie type stuff they said that wasn't bad but the end result was a white Russian with nacho cheese and if people know what a white Russian is it's like yeah. fucking Kahlua vodka and milk right but they did Kahlua vodka about and nacho cheese yeah I come back and that's the first thing I hear huh yeah so that is a yellow Russian. Perfect. But the nice. way the dude poured it, it was mostly vodka. Mm. Yeah, vodka it, does it for me. It, I, mean, yeah, I can't do fucking vodka. That shit always gets me. Um, Yeah, that and uh, tequila. I can't drink tequila. Mm. I'm fine with tequila. I don't actually like the taste of alcohol most of the time. Nobody um, likes the taste of alcohol. I do love the taste of pot brownies, though. Any, anyone who doesn't know what a white Russian is should see a Big Lebowski or any Sandman match. Well, <laughs> I, I think a white Russian leg sweep. Fucking Sandman has the best names for moves ever. Yeah. Um, Rez. But I'm going to put this out here. Yeah. I'm probably the only person in this area, in this vicinity, that does not like the Big Lebowski. Probably. Uh, I can understand. I, yeah, I could actually understand where you're coming from. It's... I, I like it. Gets um, a good laugh out of me every now and then. Like, yeah. I heard it was great, and then I saw it, and then it's just like, well, this isn't really funny. It's one of those movies. 
it's it's, it's an acquired kind of more meant to be a dark comedy. Right. It's yeah. more what it is. It's like, just a I don't, dark I don't mind. Comedy. That was the Coen Brothers, it. right? It's just it, yeah. yeah. It didn't really get me. Here's yeah. the here's the thing. Like, I went into it thinking like, oh, this movie's kind of funny. I found it really interesting. Same way like I did with Fargo. So like, I can get Fargo. I mean, both have Steve Buscemi, so right. Yeah. See, it kind of reminds me a lot of um, Birdman, where it's more oh, about Super the. Birdman was really good. I like. It that. really was. It. Oh my. Yeah. It. Like it's not even meant to be funny. None of it's meant like, to be funny. From the previews, I thought like Birdman was supposed to be like this dark, serious superhero movie, but it was like the exact opposite of that. And I was just yeah. like, well, shit. And Michael Keaton carried that entire fucking movie. Fuck. Michael Keaton is great in that. Uh, dude, he, he destroyed Edward Norton in that. Like, and that <clears throat> Edward Norton is usually like super the good best in movies. Actor film. Yeah, but Michael Keaton's like, nah, I got this. Um, I'm not just sit back and fucking enjoy. I'm not a bad person by saying that I think Keaton's one of the best Batmans. No, you wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> Keaton is probably one of the best. I think Clooney could have done it if Schumacher wasn't such have. an incompetent yeah. fuck. Well, yeah. not only That's that, good. but not only that, but I think it was still really early in Clooney's career. Yeah, because I think I can't remember did. From Dust Till Dawn come before that or after that? Uh, before. I think, uh, yeah. If it was before, then Clooney fucked that up. It, again, the whole directing process from Schumacher was a mess. The whole movie sounded like it was one big, huge mess. Though, it was, though it was I, should, I should tell you the incredible things I've read recently uh, through rumors and, like, paper scripts. Um, there were the third Batman movie that the, um, oh, fuck that Burton was already writing. He wanted I can probably Williams. Confirm this. He wanted Williams, Robin Williams as the Riddler. Yeah, yeah. He can, it's I even better it. though. Schumacher, Schumacher's uh, third movie was actually meant to uh, have Steve Buscemi as the Scarecrow. Yeah, and yeah, and, and he her. also wanted a, a cast of Harley Quinn in it too. Yep, and uh, he also. He wanted the man bat too, I think. Yeah, yeah and gonna, like uh, man bat. Oh, and he wanted uh, Jack bat, Nicholson bat back. Batter. He wanted Jack. Yeah, Nich for, like he wanted talk... Jack Nicholson back for a dream sequence with the yeah, fear. Yeah, the, and like shit. that. Um, Burton was talking a bit about that. Like I, I recently picked up the um, Superman documentary that came out. Like the oh. one about uh, where Nicolas Cage was supposed to be Superman, and. <laughs> Kevin Smith told a bunch of stories at cons and yeah, shit about that. And, and But they got the guy that he was talking about that wanted the giant spider and shit. The giant and, spider, Superman, yeah. not to fly, to have a blue, yeah, like, they got that dude, silver suit. And he's like, he was like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. He's full of shit. <laughs> but, like, he, he seems so phony in the way that he says it. So it's like, well, I gotta believe Kevin Smith on this one because he sounds yeah. earnest as fuck. But then, like, they start talking, like, because they bring up Batman, which is the reason why uh, Tim Burton got the role, because, like, they were, they asked Kevin Smith, they were like, well, who did you get to do this movie? He's like, well, yeah. look at Tim Burton, look what he did with Batman, you kind of got to get him to do this shit. And then Tim Burton's talking about the Batman series, and he's just like, yeah, fuck Joel Schumacher, he fucking ruined my series. All this shit. And holy it's just, shit! Uh, it's like the gloves were off, and I'm like, holy fuck, I didn't think Tim Burton cared that much about Batman, but he's like, no, he's like, Jim Carrey was fine as the Riddler for the most part. He, and then, like, he addresses the rumors of Jim Carrey possibly playing Brainiac in the movie. He's like, I don't know where the fuck that came from. They were like, well, Jim Carrey said it. He's like, well, just because Jim Carrey says something doesn't fucking make it so. And then he tells, like, he explains who he originally wanted. Like, yeah. I think he wanted Kevin Spacey originally as Brainiac. But that didn't oh. work. 
he's like, well, I guess, you know, it didn't work for Brainiac, but then I wanted to cast him as Luthor. And then the guy that made the documentary is like, well, who did you want to maybe cast as Brainiac? Because he was a prominent part of the script or whatever. He's like, uh, well, fuck it. You know, I like I was a huge fan of Christopher Walken at the point. So, like, we kind of wanted to get him in. Huh. And huh. I was like, holy shit, dude. That would have been pretty cool. And I think Spielberg start or not Spielberg, uh, James Cameron talked about the fact that he was supposed to do a fucking Spider-Man movie. And apparently the, the Spider-Man movie was going to have an electro sex scene and death, like Spider-Man yeah. intentionally killing Sandman and actually like, like as soon as they heard that shit, they were like, no, nah, this is not happening. Go do your fucking Avatar movie and make us million upon millions of dollars. I think that was at the time when comic books were starting to become a little more mature, like the, you know, or well, mature as in the, you know, they sold based on titty and gore for the longest time. Yeah, and Rez Clone is asking, and all this happened at Battleground? Yes, all of yes. this <laughs> at Battleground. People discussed what was going to happen with the superhero yeah. genre, and... For the most part, it worked out, I guess. I mean, you didn't get Nicolas Cage as Superman, did you? No, you got Henry Cavill, who kind of worked out, so a thumbs yeah. up. Bitch. I wouldn't have minded Nicolas Cage, though. I mean... It, it, like, uh... from the test footage they showed in the documentary, it was actually pretty alright. Yeah. Um, just so you know, half my keyboard just failed. Oh, great. Well, that's fine, because most mostly people came here like, oh, Elface is going to rant. He's going to call another person a crackhead god. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not going to happen. The only thing is, like, pay-per-view from start to almost finish was fantastic. And then you get to the fucking main event. Brock Lesnar is suplexing the fuck out of Seth Rollins. The lights go out. Gong gong and then Undertaker shows up tombstones Brock Lesnar twice after a choke slam and then nothing fucking happens it makes legitimately no fucking sense whatsoever so like why the fuck would Undertaker even bother interfering in the fucking match why because he's bitter about the streak well, he no. beat Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania, so that there goes that fucking theory. So why the fuck is he interfering in that shit? Is he going to be a, a constant fucking presence on Raw and SmackDown for the oh authority? God. No, because fucking where the fuck was Seth Rollins and the referee? The referee Dad. still standing when Brock Lesnar had fucking Seth Rollins up for the F.I., where the fuck did Seth Rollins go to? It doesn't fucking make any sense. I liked the whole Vince was thing. in. I liked the whole uh, fucking thing make, made no sense. I like like if yeah. Uh, if slips, there was uh, sorry, uh, slips analogy right. was the best with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh saying that with summoning you need to sacrifice two creatures. <laughs> it still doesn't explain this shit. It doesn't like okay, so Undertaker shows up. Where the fuck's the ref? Dead. Where the f no ref bump? There was no ref bump. It, it's presumed the, the taker. ref was standing on his two feet. The lights went out. Well, the I mean, ref dead not even in like you know, the rapture side. biblical sense where they just kind of poofed out of thin air, you know? No, because. If it was a rapture thing, the ref's clothes would have been in the middle of the ring. Fuck, okay, that's actually a good point. N no fucking clothes in the middle of the ring. The ref was gone. Seth Rollins was gone. There was no fucking explanation as to why the match did not end in a disqualification for Brock Lesnar winning. Either mm. way, it ended it would have been a bullshit ending. It's not a great ending. Like, I have no problem with Undertaker coming back. 
I'm a fucking huge Undertaker mark. He's legitimately one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. But it made no sense in the context of this match. So it's like, is he going to show up tomorrow night on Raw and be standing side by side with Triple H, Seth Rollins, and Stephanie McMahon? Like, yeah. All right. Well, fucking Kane's gone, so maybe I'm better than Kane is. Maybe Taker's like, still part of the corporate ministry. <laughs> Maybe he's like, well, Shane never fucking fired me, so no chance. That's what you got, and then you got that little fucking crazy ass remix going on. It it just leg legitimately makes no sense whatsoever. It's <laughs> it's dumb. Maybe it's dumb. maybe it's because Brock attacked Kane on the Raw beforehand. It it's all about it's all about. The money. The streak ending and that Paul Heyman mention, mentioning that Kane was Undertaker's baby brother. That's it. That's the rationale. But there's a missing rationale and what the fuck happened tonight? Maybe if they explain that Taker did it because he wants the title and he know he can't beat Brock. So we stop Brock from getting the that title. It still doesn't work. Because if that's the case with that, he still has to face Brock to get a number one contenders match. Right, but um they they can do some kind of BS way for Taker to win that match. If they're doing him as a heel. It'd have to be it'd have to be the only way the ending for this match would have made sense. Which is if you do a Brock Lesnar match against Undertaker at SummerSlam and you put Undertaker over, the only way you could do that is to make Undertaker heel, have Scott Armstrong come out and do a fast count. And that's the only way this match could have made sense, is if ref takes a bump, Brock Lesnar hits the F5 on Seth Rollins, has him beat, Lights go out. Undertaker comes out, hits the tombstone on Brock, and then you have fucking Scott Armstrong come out as Rollins rolls over into the pen. But yeah. yeah. But as it fucking stands, there is no rationale for it other than oh my god, Undertaker is fucking bitter about WrestleMania two years ago, a year ago, whatever. And that's it. A year and a half. There's nothing. There year is and a half late. Yeah, there's legitimately nothing. Like, he redeemed himself at WrestleMania by beating Bray Wyatt. So, what the fuck purpose does he have disrupting this match? There's nothing. There is legitimately nothing. Mm. Now, I can... Like, I can kind of actually definitely agree with that. I just don't see any reason for this at all. I don't. There's no reason. There's don't, no reason. I don't see any reason for Taker to be back unless he's going to face somebody at SummerSlam. Say like a Barrett or something. The only reason I can actually get behind like the only justified thing is if he becomes more prominent. Mm. Like, if, if it would have started with like a motorcycle revving and then fucking, like, American Badass or fucking Roland from Limp Bizkit, that would have been fine. But no, they're still trying to pull off the fucking Dead Man gimmick. This dude is fucking 56 years old, fucking can't walk down the ramp in a timely fashion. Like, no, I can't do this shit no more. Like, I can only suspend my disbelief so much before it's just like, okay, Mark... Retire. I want him to be. I want him to do some kind of like manager thing. DC, it's not that I want a fucking fifty-year-old biker, but a fifty-year-old dude that's still trying to fucking do what he's doing to ride down to the ramp to cut down the fucking three-minute entrance that he normally has. Yeah, let's go. Undertaker riding down on a motorcycle, roll around the fucking ring a couple times, 
This is my yard. Fucking last ride, choke slam. Get the fuck out. That's it. That I could do that. But this fucking fifty-year-old trying to pretend he's a dead guy can't kick out of three F5s. Loses his streak. Fucking done. No, no fucking undead bullshit. It's done. Yeah, no, exactly. I can, again, I can definitely agree with that. Like, like, and it doesn't, even, even in the context that it was done, Brock Lesnar was fresh. It doesn't make sense for fucking Undertaker to get the one up on him at all. Like, no, it Brock doesn't. is staring at him, he runs at him in the okay fucking choke slam out of nowhere, and then two tombstones. Didn't Brock kick out of fucking three tombstones? Like, yeah, he did. If if you take into account the amount of times Brock Lesnar has faced The Undertaker, every time Brock Lesnar has won. That is a fact. Every time Undertaker has hit Brock Lesnar with his finisher, Brock Lesnar has kicked out. So there is no reason whatsoever that Brock Lesnar should have just been stiff in the fucking middle of the ring. At all. He should have popped right the fuck back up, hit Taker with an F5. That is why it does not make sense for Undertaker to have shown himself here tonight. Besides to draw SummerSlam if they're going to do Taker versus Brock. And guess what's going to happen? Brock's, Brock's going to win. If he doesn't win, then there's something wrong. Then there's Exactly. It, it, well, oh my god, Undertaker won. Well, Why? Because he's not going to show up again until fucking WrestleMania next. Year. No, Royal Rumble, win the Royal Rumble, lose at WrestleMania, that's it of Taker for the rest of the... If I just called that and that's exactly what happens, that's like, pretty it, sad. It, it legitimately just does not make any fucking sense for Undertaker to have been here tonight. No. It, it, and not only that ruins the whole thing, legitimacy of Brock fucking ending the streak, you know? It not, destroys not that at, whole, like, you know. But it was a squash match. He was just suplexing the fuck out of Seth Rollins. And then the lights go out, and Seth Rollins isn't even around ringside anymore. And neither is the ref. Like, what the fuck happened that they're gone? No, this, this is what's... It, it just doesn't fucking make sense. And that's the problem that a lot of people have with WWE. It's like, okay, I can fucking be a mark in certain areas, but it's like, are you honestly expecting me to fucking be a mark when Brock Lesnar is suplexing the fuck out of your WWE champion, the lights go out, and your champion is fucking gone, and then the guy that the challenger is standing off against beat the fuck out of for 10 minutes at Wrestlemania 29 he's just standing there and then all of a sudden this guy can beat the fuck out of that guy you know the guy that ended his streak like really I'm supposed to believe this Here's... like don't insult my fucking intelligence WWE I may be stupid and I may be drunk but I'm not fucking that drunk You are, they are all they're doing right now is demoralizing the title that that title that they built they're up, what went putting it on the title, but they're fucking insulting the intelligence of their fucking fan base. Saying that Taker could still do a match, Taker can do a match, yes, but There's here's no the problem. but right, but not against Brock, not against no, Brock, because that's not the feud you fucking go for. No, especially you... after like Taker got concussed, fucking two minutes into their last match and it was just Brock suplexing the fuck out of them for fucking ten more minutes after that. I, I still I still like the idea of okay, so this is what I think is going to happen. Taker is going to go after the title. He can't do it. He obviously can't do it. It's going to be like the Tommy Dreamer run when in ECW when he's like, uh, if I don't have the title by blah blah blah, I quit. I retire. So he says that at, at like Royal Rumble if I don't have the title I retire he goes for the title whoever has it and loses or he goes out yes yeah. 
He goes out and says that he's about to retire. Sting comes out and says, no, you got one more match with me at WrestleMania. But at this point, is it far too late for that? No, because people will still pay for it. I mean, people will still pay for it, but... Yes, it's way too late. In your opinion, opinion, does it still have the implications that it could have had? No, this should have happened in... two old men fucking trying to I mean, after the last, shit out of each other and it just after last year's mania Sting proved that he can still go Taker proved he can still go but mm. is the weight of the match still the same as it would have been like if Sting would have signed maybe two years ago prior to Brock Lesnar beating the freak w- like is it still the same no it's not like there's there's nothing there. Like aside from a dream match, there's just nothing there. And never never mind that. That this is not the only person that supposedly is going to wrestle again at WrestleMania. I've heard Austin's going to come back. Uh, the uh, rumors in here say I'll believe it when I see it. Well, well, the, the like one of the greatest like evidence is why put Austin on the cover. Rez, I will agree with that if there's like a whole fucking ministry run in. Like Well you can't I don't think that you can get Viscera to come in, that's for sure. Well yeah, he's pretty he's pretty dead. Uh that's <laughs> well, well I mean you could get oh. you could get Mid- Midian, the APA, um <laughs> they could have a uh, side by side the dead body of Viscera <laughs> and Let's Luger running in. You could get the brood running in. Gangrel, sure. Chris and Edge. I mean, Edge would probably just use a chair. Like, you'd have to sanction the concert. Otherwise, that shit wouldn't work. Oh, I love what Re- uh, Replex said. Fuck that shit. Just put Titus in one of those inflatable sumo suits. Call him Viscera. Oh, uh, yeah, that too. That's pretty racist, but, you know, it works. I mean, like, with what they're doing and what they're building up, it at this point, it just does not make sense. If Shane For, comes back in any form... Uh, if people will mark the fuck out. Like, guaranteed, Shane... If Shane ever came back, this is he like, would be more over than anybody yeah, in yeah. the WWE right now. Guaranteed, just because of what he's done and what he's left for, and he and, needs to come back. Um, and, it's like half the reason I'm doing the podcast. Yeah, and like who says he won't come back? And like he's got no reason to come back. He's got his own business that is, from what I understand is a Chinese business and is more profitable than the WWE. So it's just like, eh, I'll make more money than my dad right now. I would, I, I'm still fishy, like, uh, like, they, they decided to do this match at Battleground. At Battleground. Which all fucking places. Which match? Um, Rollins versus Lesnar. Yeah, it should have happened at SummerSlam. It would have been a bigger surprise if Taker came. But saying that, I if it went down like it did tonight at SummerSlam, I'd still be as pissed off as I am right now. Well, I feel like I feel like it'd be better like, if Taker had a match beforehand and, and show I mean, and, and then showed he can actually wrestle still. I mean, he can't, like he showed that with Bray Wyatt. Like Wyatt had a fucking injured ankle, and they still had one of the better matches at Mania. But it's just like, where do you go with Undertaker now? He lost the fucking streak. He legitimately should not have won the match at Mania. Yeah, um, Bray Wyatt did that more than Undertaker did. Um, Bray, but yeah, yeah. Undertaker won. Like, where do you go with Undertaker now? They're gonna do Bray versus Reigns too. I know that. 
They're going to. Are they? They're going to. Because they need to, they need to have Roman over at the bigger pay per view. Because they're still pushing Roman. And I I like Roman Wait, and everything. It's I, just. I, I, I wanna, uh, sorry. Go ahead. Um. I still I like I like Roman. I I, I feel like he has a lot of things. It's just he's still missing it. Kind of like when Diesel uh, with his championship run. He was still yeah, missing it. Yeah. It's he just needs that one feud that'll put him over the top. Like, Diesel didn't really have that one feud until after he had already lost the title, I think. And that feud was with Shawn Michaels. Mm -hmm. Roman needs maybe, like, not even, like, people are like, well, when is he going to feud with Rollins? That's not the feud he needs. He needs a feud with Ambrose, in my yeah. opinion. That's They're the trying to go for the whole, you know, authority gimmick thing. They need someone who... Oh, what's the best words I can come up with at this point? They need they, a they real buddy. Need... But they need a real buddy for Rollins. They need an actual buddy for Rollins. No, I, I want to hear, like, uh, what Sek is trying Sorry. to get at. Because I think I well, agree I'm, with what I can't... I'm trying I'm trying to, like, word it. It's weird. They need yeah. someone who doesn't fit the bill of, you know, the wrestler. What they're trying to do is right. they're trying to set up Roman as, you know, the big guy, the face. But nobody wants to see the typical, oh, look at me, I'm a fucking roid monkey. Her, right. der, der, der. They want to see someone who can do shit that they and haven't seen right. before or hear things that they haven't heard before. That guy is Ambrose. I don't yeah. like I don't even understand what's so hard for people to grasp at this fucking concept with. Like it pisses me want, off. So and much. I agree with that. Like if they want if they really want Reigns to get over as a face, even if they want to get him over as a heel, put him right up against Ambrose. Like, because as the way I've been seeing it is, like, with the way they've been setting shit up, it kind of it kind of left room for a bit of a S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion. Like, maybe have Am both Ambrose and Reigns turn heel and help Seth win regain or retain the title. But that's not the way they're going. So if you want to really get Reigns over, if... Put him as the face. Let Dean Ambrose do the talking. Give it because no. Give what, it a what they failed to realize is Dean Ambrose can make Roman Reigns look like a fucking megastar. Just go back to FCW when Dean Ambrose was feuding with William Regal. It was fucking gangbusters. Um, gangbusters. Right. That's it, what they need for Reigns. Like, nah. if they really, if they're really fucking, like, okay, well, all our eggs in the Cena basket are starting to run out, despite the fact that he's having the best matches out of pretty much everybody. Like, I, all right, I don't. Well, if you want to fucking build this next star, and if you're really willing to put. Reigns in that position his first feud has to be his first major feud has to be with Ambrose it has to be no this is this is what I think Cesaro no no yes no no, no listen to this no well, I'll, I'll listen but I don't agree the, off the bat I want I want Ambrose to be higher up that you like he always, like he is right now I don't want him to play second fiddle to Reigns. I really don't. He doesn't have to. He, do he doesn't have to. He, do he shouldn't be. He. I mean, I like that. I like that. You know, Even Ambrose is going is going against Rollins for the title once in a while, but nothing right. nothing's actually produced from Come that except man. for except for oh, Ambrose should have won the title. But he did. Right. So, um. So with Cesaro. He's being built up going after the U.S. title. Eventually, he's either going to win it or he's just not going to win it at all and 
win the respect of everyone else. When he wins the respect of everyone else, I and feel he's like... He's already won the respect of everybody else as far as I'm concerned. Right, but there's no... But right now there's still no conclusion. He's still going after the title. But that's that's where, in my opinion, that's where Cesaro needs to be. He's better at chasing the title than he is at holding the so title. So why doesn't he chase the World Heavyweight title? He needs to build up a bit more, just a bit more. Right, and he's putting him not the few, best on the mic. Let's just be no, honest, actually, Cesaro. Actually, he he cut a pretty awesome promo on for the WWE dot com thing. Like I guess, like it doesn't count for live audiences, but like the promo that mm. Cesaro, uh, I I try and find it, but the last time I try I tried to find something, it didn't work out, but. It was really, really good. He was just basically saying, like, I'm the fucking standard. No matter where I'm at, I'm going to fucking give everything that I've got and try and be the standout person in the entire fucking match. But if you put him in into a feud with uh, Reigns, which is, I think, what you were saying, Gamebox... Um, I'm uh, saying I'm saying for down the line, not for SummerSlam. I'm saying well, yeah, well down the line, if you put him in that, like, you know who's going to come out on top. It's not going to be Cesaro, despite the fact that Vince says he doesn't fucking connect because he's from Switzerland. But if you look okay, at then br- okay, then Bret Hart doesn't connect because he's from Canada. Exactly, but that's that's Vince's opinion. Is, is that Cesaro doesn't connect, but if you look at Cesaro's past, per- like just from maybe the last two weeks, Cesaro didn't fucking connect. He hit a fucking home run. Period. Okay, like, so he's proven he's proven that he can he can go with anybody. Right. As far um, as I'm concerned. Right. Okay. But, here. They are not going to give him that opportunity. Right. Still. Everyone compares Daniel Bryan to Bret Hart as terms That's of like... That's not fair. That's not fair. No, um, they should compare Cesaro to Bret Hart. As if they put... Okay, if they oh. do put Cesaro with the U.S. title, it'd be like Bret Hart's run with the Intercontinental title. Even even still, I, I still think that's an unfair comparison. Well, like, oh. Bret like uh, and I'll explain why I'm talking I think personality. I'm not talking about wrestling. I'm just talking about no, personality. No, I'm, I'm not even talking about personality. I just I think that's an unfair comparison. Period. Not not because of what Bret Hart was capable of at the time, but in my opinion, I think what Cesaro is capable of now is better than what Bret Hart was capable of then. But, and I'll actually agree with that. And, like, as big of a heart mark as I am. And Cesaro like, has I, a lot of fucking potential. They just have, yeah. haven't have utilized it until recently. He's doing right. so much. And it's actually, like... It's weird to say... To look at someone and say, I know you could do better. I know they could do better with you. And then when they finally start doing better, you're like, yeah, okay, that's good. Just and a like, little I'm, more and we'll be there. And I'm right there with you. Like I know like you're you're a huge Bret Hart fan. And I'm I like in the time, like up in like I'll say this, like because I think I'm I'm older than you are, right? You're yeah, how old twenty three. Right? Okay, and how old are you, Gamebox? Twenty one. Okay, yeah, I'm way older than both of you. Yeah. Okay, so at the time of WrestleMania 12, yeah, I was a huge, huge, huge Bret Hart fan. But then HBK started building that groundswell. Like, oh man, this this is fucking huge. It could be big. Well, yeah, because because they were pushing the retirement angle that you know um, he that he was going to retire. HBK. No, that was that wasn't that wasn't the thing at WrestleMania 12. It was just. Iron Man match. Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels. Fucking 60 minute time limit. And these dudes just going balls to the fucking wall. 
Now, for as for as hard as these guys went, I think Cesaro in a ten minute match goes harder than they went in sixty minutes. Well, yeah, that's because uh, both Brett and Sean, yes, they had styles, but their styles did not connect because they both hated each no. other. No, well, no, this is uh, when the Iron Man match, this is like years before the Montreal screw job. They were no. still on all right terms. They were no. still pretty decent. No, 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 um, no, no, Sean, Sean was more, um, a backstage politicing. Like if, well, if, if you're going off of the whole, get the fuck out of my ring, this is my moment thing, that's beyond the point. Um, that is no. literally beyond the point of what I'm going for. What I'm saying is, for as hard as these two guys have gone, like, a lot of people... They compare, like, Cesaro or Daniel Bryan to fucking Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels and all this other fucking shit. It's like, that's not fair to Daniel Bryan and Cesaro because Daniel Bryan and Cesaro have been cutting their teeth on the indies for fucking ten years. And in the ten years that they've been doing that shit, I honestly think they surpassed where... Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels were then. I can agree with that, actually. See, if fucking Brian wasn't still injured, I would love to see a Brian Cesaro match as a main event, or, they, you know, even a co-main event of some sort. Right? Like, something they, right now that... ...would fucking tear the house down. Yeah, exactly! You know, I think that the problem is, especially nowadays, that a lot of people are more interested in the wrestling than they are the storylines nowadays. It you know, like, so storylines are still a part of it, and they will always be a part of it. But, you know, they shouldn't be the center focus anymore. The center focus should be and, match. And I think people are starting to go... Like, even the audiences that WWE have, like, I think they're starting to Wait. go more towards... Oh, uh, hold up. That... that Hold, hold, hold up, uh, Ralph Wingham just posted something. Uh, after WWE Battleground tonight, WWE Tag Team Champions Titus O'Neil and Darren Young noted on Instagram that they are pulled over by the police. Oof. Wow. I hope that's not true. Anytime I hear that, I think of uh, when Sabu and RVD got pulled over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or that, or Iron no. Sheik and Hacksaw. I'm WWE... Superstar RVD. I was like, oh, I heard of you. What's your name? Sabu. Oh, Sabu? I haven't heard of you. Oh, <laughs> poor Sabu. That's, that's legitimately what happened. It's like, oh, I've heard I of know. RVD. And then RVD's like, yeah, yeah, you know, you know, I'm the WWE champion right now, you know. Five star frog splash. How's it going, Sonya? But yeah, like I, I hope it, I hope the uh, prime time players didn't legitimately get pulled over. At least, like, if they did it, like a fucked up tail light, maybe, like. Oh. Okay. Um. So, a racist cop. I mean, at least then, yeah. you know, I don't know. So, Elface, what I was trying to mention with WrestleMania 12 was, back in the backstage, there was the heart side and there was the click and they well, both I mean, and, they, and, and Brett always we know, made suggestions to Vince all the time but Sean's is usually the one that went through well I mean at that time like even still at that time I think uh, Brett had a bit more pull than Sean at that time just a bit I mean, it wasn't I, I until '95 or '96 that Sean started having like the well, mass I mean, amount of pull that he did. Well, I mean, at that time, at like '95, '96 is when uh, Brett was doing that uh, his TV show that he had. Like a lot of people don't remember that, but he was he did yeah. a western show. I think it was on CBS. It didn't last very long. But uh, that was at the time Sean was still 
world heavyweight champion, so I was privy to that in real time. Yeah. So, do you think they're gonna do um something like a gimmick match? Not like a gimmick gimmick, like on a pole, but some kind of like. Uh, I'll be right back. So um, like, stipula- you can expect that, and then yeah. when I come back. Okay, yeah. some some kind of stipulation match with um, Cesaro and Cena for the title. Oh Jesus! Um, I maybe the possibility is there. Maybe like an uh, not maybe like an Iron Man match. Would they do an Iron Man match? For s- maybe. Would they do it for SummerSlam though? Again, I don't know, but um, what was I gonna say? I I'm legitimately seeing Cena's doing a lot better than he used to. He's actually like, I don't know. It seems like he's gotten a lot better as a whole. Maybe it's because he's working with people that can you know pull their own weight too. Right, like um. Like Cesaro, you know, can... it's not Miz versus it's not fucking Miz versus Cena where neither man can fucking well Cena can wrestle Miz and is, Miz, Miz is, can it's... fucking couldn't wrestle a paper bag and make it look good. But yeah, let's have Miz go over at WrestleMania. What? <sighs> um, this is why I'm. This is why I'm gonna. Um, I might get some heat from this, but this is why I miss uh, Russo's booking. Which is everyone, <laughs> which is everyone had a storyline. Yeah. Um, I think Jim Cornette said it the best, and despite him hating um, Russo, which is he, at one point, Crash Holly was more over than Bill Goldberg. Yep. All because he had a storyline. He actually had something going for him as a character. Right. And that's, you know, that's what I miss is that everything, even at least at the Russo era of WWE, or F, you know, everything at least worked in some way or another. Right. You know, now nowadays it's just kind of like, some people have something and some people... Take, take the other day with uh, Stardust versus uh, Neville. That should not have just happened. That should have been like a yeah. build up. I don't know. As at I Battleground. Said, at Battleground. They could have done a three-week build-up. Like, like, you know, Stardust doing the promos that's near Neville causing him to lose matches. Yeah. Then, um... Well, it, it's not just that. You, you can also look towards um, other things. Like, suddenly, Barrett and R-Truth are, are going against each other for the for yeah. a crown. Like, it's stupid. Um, um, hello. What what was the question you asked a sec before I left? Because I know it was yeah. like a general okay. question. Do you think they're going to do some kind of stipulation match with um, Cesaro versus Cena at like SummerSlam? No. Not not even like a Last Man Standing or an Iron Man match. No, it's gonna it's gonna be Kevin Owens versus John Cena, and Four. Kevin Owens is gonna come out with the United States title. Mm. There's there's legitimately no question on that one. That's what's going to happen. Then, where's Cesaro going? Uh, possibly a feud with Owens. Hopefully. And then where's Cena That'd going? Be nice. Where's Cena going? Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> After the WWE title. <laughs> No, nah, I, I think he's gonna. I think, I think at this point, WWE knows that maybe having him in that. Oh, by the way, where was where was Sheamus? What, uh, he, where the fuck he was faced, Sheamus? He faced uh, he faced Orton in the very first match. No, I mean cashing in on. Oh no! Well, uh, I, mean, well, I mean, Rollins disappeared, well, but got the Undertaker fucking tombstoning, tombstoning Brock Lesnar ninety nine times, and then fucking Seth Rollins disappearing altogether. Now we're gonna do. Like, well, I, I don't want to see Rusev Cena again. I don't want to see Rusev. No, nah, Rusev is kind of. I think Rusev is kind of done in, in, in that sense. 
He's like now that he's got boots after his fucking injury, he's got to refine himself. What's up with Ziggler? What's he uh, nothing. He, Ziggler he, is literally just floating around in fucking space, like he's cars at the end of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Two. He's just floating through space, and nobody cares. Apparently, he hasn't re-signed, or maybe he has, who knows. Yeah. As I said, who fucking cares? Like, they were trying to get Lana over with the whole storyline, but I think that backfired because people were like, holy shit, Rusev is cutting really good promos. It's like, well, mm. shit. Like, and then they're like, well, we're going to have Lana wrestle. It's like, well, holy shit, that's like having Eva Marie wrestle like two years ago. Also, can I just ask what that meant? I have, That was quite a reach. <laughs> I'm what curious. Oh, no. Replex said, can you get me something off the top shelf set? Because that was quite a reach. Maybe he was referring to when I said, uh, you know, uh, Ziggler's just kind of floating out in the middle of space and nobody cares. Uh, he's probably got his was... headphones on, uh, listening to Rocket Man. You know. Oh, he's uh, filming like a movie. He was just saying, maybe he was just going along with it, like, top shelf, you have to reach to grab it. Um, uh, um, Ziggler's filming a movie. Uh, I, ho I hope it's a uh, gay porno. Decross, decross the difference between Lana training and Eva Marie training is Eva Marie training was training with Brian Kendrick. Who the fuck is True. Lana training with? Let me look that up. Um, oh, it's pretty sad when John Cena is punting over uh, Dolph Ziggler's for former girlfriend than Dolph Ziggler. Just saying. And, like, a lot of people are fucking pissed off. Like, oh my god, John Cena didn't fucking put Kevin Owens over. Kevin Owens tapped out. It's like, did he really? He tapped twice and then reached for fucking Cena's hands and the ref called the bell. He'll fucking dispute that shit tomorrow night on Raw and you'll get Cena versus Owens 4 and fucking SummerSlam and guess what Owens is gonna win the US title at SummerSlam fucking be happy I hope they do that I see it no, I mean my problem is that and I know probably gonna get a lot of flack for saying this but please hear me out Cena is well known for killing characters off with everyone he has a feud with. He, does, he had a feud with Rusev. Does. Fucking char literal character assassination. He had a feud with Rusev. Rusev's dead. Fucking, I, I just, I don't know. I'm afraid for Owen's future in the company with, already. With, with the internet age, I, I don't I don't necessarily agree with that. Just because of uh, Xavier Woods' uh, YouTube channel. He's had Rusev on there a couple times, and Rusev is cool as fuck. And especially with this shitty ass feud that he's had with Dolph Ziggler and Lana, yeah. Rusev's the only one that's come out like a shining light. Yeah. Um, I think Rusev's fine. I like, think. Yeah, maybe he lost the fucking Cesaro. But and he lost. He lost a it. lot of momentum too. I think, like wait. after the John Cena well, feud, he, he started losing. Wait, wait, Rusev. Momentum. Rusev beat Cesaro and Owens in a triple threat. No, he didn't. Yeah, on no. Raw. No, uh, didn't Cesaro win that match? No. Well, hmm. then Cesaro pinned him clean on SmackDown a couple nights later. So. Right, but that's still, but that's still pretty great. I mean, I, well, I know for a fact that Bray was Bray's character was legitimately killed after the scene like, feud. Like, Rusev and that might as well just be an assassination. Right like, Rusev is not going to be fucking dancing or teaming with fucking Santino Marilla, so he's fucking fine. Dude, so. dude, well, but, San, but, just, well, Santino needs he, a spinal cool. fusion anyway, so we won't see him anywhere near a ring. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're not going to get a fucking of the ring, so. Santino thing. To just be cool, fucking Rusev is fine. He's alright. Just let him do his fucking thing. 
let Tongs do his fucking thing. Hey, but, um... I mean, I'm always gonna be a Rusev Again, Mark. Don't I'd argue you otherwise. Wyatt lost momentum, but he and the family were fine until Cena used them for suplex practice after SummerSlam went up there. Yep. So, what's, go what's gonna Wyatt happen? Is weird. Bray Wyatt is a weird thing. He, he got back he momentum. Does, he, he doesn't need wins. But he does. Which is the weird thing. Like, he doesn't need it, but he does. No, he needs it over certain like, people. Up until, up until WrestleMania, he, he didn't need it. But then he was feuding with The Undertaker. He could have used it. But then they were like, well, fuck it, let's put Mark over. Why? Why? What's the fucking point? Like, what, what's he gonna do? Feud with fucking Brock Lesnar and Brock's gonna beat his ass again? Okay. But I mean, Bray won tonight, so that's okay. That's good. And there was a mo wasn't there a reunion too, or was I? Yeah, high? Uh, him and Luke Harper. So as soon as uh, Eric w Rowan comes back from injury, he'll join them. Fuck, that'd be nice. Uh, so I like I like that. Fine. I like the idea of Rowan Bray, being the smartest Bray man. Bray Wyatt is fine. Don't worry about him. Yeah. Hopefully the fucking writers just say, you know what, we can't write for you. You do something. Because that's what Bray Wyatt needs. When he was in FCW and NXT, he was doing his own fucking promos. He w yep. Nobody was writing for him. He was just like, yep, this is how I'm doing this shit. But now he's got to fucking deal with fucking... What's the dude that was managing Great Kali like two years ago? No, oh, Rajin Singh. Yeah, he's got to deal with that fucker. Like, oh, God. you think you can write for this character? Okay. No. It's like, if you want to get someone to write for the Bray Wyatt character, fucking hire Jake the Snake, motherfucker. It's the same character. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, See, I could get down with that. Yeah. Never mind that. Bray he was Wyatt, he, Bray Wyatt. He cut a promo like he was doing a one of those interviews with Cole for the WWE dot com thing. Fucking straight up reference Jake the Snake Roberts. Huh. And um, they did. They, they're not doing shit with it. D Cross. He was at Raw last week. Uh, who says that? Um, D Cross. Rowan, Rowan whole face. Uh, Jake the Snake thing. is in the hospital. No, um, he was at Raw last week, wasn't he? And backstage. Yeah, yeah Jake the Snake's fine. He tweeted a couple hours ago. Um, yeah, just have him like we we're we're miss. Um, Jake the Snake is Sister Abigail. It's a fucking swerve. Never mind that. Just they should have <laughs> just have him fucking manage Bray Wyatt. And let him do his thing. Let them do their thing. Um, because even Jake Roberts is like, holy shit, Bray Wyatt's really good. Yeah, WWE let lost a great person, though, when, when Dusty died. They lost a great talent of someone teaching people how to do promos. And Jake would be the, a great filler. Fucking bring Jake in to fill that spot for training. And even then... He'd tell the writers for Raw, like, let Bray Wyatt cut his own fucking promos. See, because that's a problem he, with it, this generation, is that they don't let people do their own fucking thing like them, they did in the Attitude Era. They have to have writers, they have to have this, they have to have that. Let people fucking do their own shit. <laughs> they don't think people can be like, okay, I can cut this promo... And then I can sell the fucking pay-per-view. Instead, it's like, sell the pay-per-view and then cut a promo. Yeah. It's like, no. Let fucking Bray Wyatt do his thing. Guaranteed, he can fucking cut a promo. So good. Oh. Um. And then at the very, very end of the promo, barely mention the next pay-per-view coming up. And people will be like, I've got to buy that pay-per-view. 
Yeah, um, guaranteed. Because also, Heyman. Yeah. Heyman should also be one of those teachers, too, because um, if you ever watched the uh, Paul Heyman DVD, or one of them, yeah. when he was talking to Roadkill, and he was like, Roadkill, no, no, you gotta you gotta hide up your voice, you gotta actually yeah. demand, you gotta talk, you gotta actually no, talk. No, that wasn't like, Roadkill. That was a random, that was someone completely different. It wasn't Roadkill. But he's just, but I, I understand what you're saying. It's Heyman is standing there, like, telling him he's like no you say it like this like put a little bit more conviction on this syllable just like say it like this and then try it and that's the kind of guy Heyman was with ECW is he'd stay there for like an entire night trying to help people get their fucking promos across but Bray Wyatt is not that kind of person that needs someone to fucking tell him what to say like, he knows what's going on in his feud. Just let him fucking go out there and say something. Oh, well. Because when he was doing that shit in FCW, he was cutting the best promos in fucking all of WWE, bar fucking none. Well, against Paul Heyman? What do you mean? You're saying everyone in WWE, Paul Heyman could still cut the best well, promo. no, 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 like... No, like, what I'm saying is, like, Paul Heyman, like you were saying, like, Paul Heyman was telling Roadkill how to say whatever, whatever. That's completely separate from what I'm saying about Bray Wyatt. Like, well, Bray Wyatt doesn't well, I, need I was, that kind of coaching from Paul well, Heyman. No, well, I, I know that, but um, right. I was just answering well, Ralph's question, which is that was well, such a waste that Heyman and Roberts aren't having teaching classes. Oh like, yeah, yeah, like like he should be in that. He should he could be that guy in that position, <laughs> substituting for. If you want to hear, that, if, you wanna hear the, if you want to hear the fucking best promo ever, let me let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, because I know WWE actually posted it on their page. Um, uh, my one of my favorite promos is coming up in the Invasion podcast. If no, like, this promo legitimately blows anything the fuck you have oh. out of the water. I, I know. Guaranteed. I, I was, I was, I was uh, plugging the uh, podcast, because that's what I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, we'll plug, we'll plug that in time, but that promo, I'll, I'll put it in the Skype chat also, so maybe if Seth's not paying attention to the hitbox chat, but... Is this him against, uh, I'm not paying attention to anything right now. <laughs> oh, no, well, I see it. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, I see this. I do remember this promo, and... This is the best promo. Bar fucking none. All right, um... I'm Inside, sure. though, I did grow an appreciation to a recent Arn Anderson promo because it, yeah. he called the fucking shot. Okay, I'm just going to keep the, <laughs> um, the Skype chat silent so I can uh, play this right now. Yeah, I mean, everybody watch this shit. It's one of the best promos of all time. Okay, YouTube. If not the best. Okay, I'm playing it right now. Jake the Snake Roberts, the match is at hand. Well, well, the million dollar man, Ed DiBiase. Here we are at WrestleMania. And it's the biggest match of your career. Why? Because everything you stand for is on the line. Maybe a million dollar belt. Oh Sorry. yeah. It can be yours once again. You see, all you have to do to get it back is go through Damien and me. But you see, Damien and I don't forget. We remember all the times you made people grovel for your money. These were people far less fortunate than you. People who could use your money for essentials. And what did you do? You made fun of them. You humbled them. And you humiliated them. Well, now it's my turn. I'm going to make you beg, DiBiase. You are going to get down on your hands and knees. This time, you'll be the one that's humbled. This time, you'll be the one that's humiliated. And this time, you will be the one that grovels for the money. That the money you grovel for is your very own. A victim of your own greed. 
wallowing in the muck of avarice. Yeah, that's really, really good. That promo is fucking amazing. Yeah. And he, Jake says that's not even his best promo. Yeah, his best is from... Uh, I'm, I'm going to shush. I was going to say his best is from Heroes of Wrestling. <laughs> no, Jake we, we, says... We don't talk about that. Jake says his best promo was like one time he wasn't even speaking really. He was like... Mm whispering or something he's just like no, 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 no. something like muttering but like the whole goal was to get the person listening to get up to turn their TV up so they could hear what he was saying and huh. even then couldn't hear what he was saying because he was talking so low and like he, he said they the people that were recording were like, we we can't put this on TV. He's like, why? He's like, they had no explanation. He's like, this is the kind of shit that will get people to keep watching. Yeah. He said he when he he said when he was doing that he said I was speaking nothing but gibberish. I said nothing of importance. Because the most important thing about cutting a promo isn't about how loud you're talking. It's about what you're saying. Mm -hmm. That's why he never yelled when he was speaking a promo. Like, he'd raise his voice slightly. But other than that, Jake was like, no, you're going to listen to me and you're going to understand everything I say. It if you listen to promos and around this time you're going to hear a lot of let me tell you something and then just yeah. yelling and out Jake something was, Jake was one of the few that never said let me tell you something right. like I think he might have said it once or twice but other than that he's like nope right it's like like I want to find the one uh, the one promo that he cut on Randy Savage after uh, uh Damien bit him. Yeah, that one's really good. Um, I yeah. remember I remember watch, this, watching that on OSW. Yeah, that promo was really fucking good. And um, the other one. Yeah, he wasn't gonna overdo it, but like, that does not mean that a good promo has to be like that. I've I've seen others, like um, Ultimate Warrior, that when he does the challenge, the Ultimate Challenge. Yeah, is yeah. one of the greatest. Were greatest promos I ever seen. Like but, even even Randy Savage's promo after like he actually beat Jake Roberts and then like Jake hit him with like two DDTs and then slapped Elizabeth. Like Randy Savage's promo after that was so fucking good. It was probably one of the most intense things. Fucking he, he's just punching himself in the face. He's just like, oh, Elizabeth. Yeah. Oh. Um, Macho, just Macho does it too. He does it where he talks quietly and makes the person listen. And then he'll do the... Uh, and then they start go back in the Macho. Like the cream of the crop. You're, you, everyone's seen that problem. Yeah. He, you, you know, like, cup of coffee. Everything. Your mustache is crooked. Yeah. It, it's always the quips that he does when he talks quiet. So you listen and you hear the joke. But still, it's great. Oh, uh, Flair like, following is the 92 win is and, so good. And I think Bray Wyatt is about as close to that type of thing as you could get. Yeah. Um, speaking of great promos, uh, King of Ring 95, Bob Backlund yelling <laughs> at kids is the only good thing about that pay-per-view. Is that the one that Mabel won? Yeah. Did you see the one post I'd read it earlier? About? Let me see. Uh, Mabel apparently had a championship belt won to commemorate his win of King of the Ring. 
Hmm. Let me uh, let me see if I can refine it, cause the fucking the belt actually looks pretty sweet. Yeah, um, Bob Backlund does a presidential campaign around uh, Philadelphia, saying that he should become the newest president, cause Jack Tony just retired at that point. Hmm. Funny Jack Tony. Yeah. Um. He actually retired because he um. Stole funds from WWE. Here it is. I'm gonna post it in your uh the chat. Stream chat. Yeah, not a problem. Oh shit! I forgot. I didn't. Yeah. My bad. Hold on. Um. Oh. I'm a bit excited. So uh, here we go. Um. That belt looks pretty fucking rad. They should give that to Barrett. Yeah, oh, dude, that'd be awesome. Like, just replace the F with the E. Yeah. That'd be fucking awesome. Like, there were other pictures posted of it, and you could tell it was made for fucking Mabel, man. Because, like, <laughs> the strap is so fucking huge. Did all those people actually leave? What do you mean? Hmm. Like I, I swear there was like a lot more people here and the, now it's just like showing you, Res Cloud, Who's and Ralph. No. Oh, no, jo no jo there's ten I got ten people in the chat. Oh, uh is it Jake or is it Jaka? Please let me know because I've been like trying to pronounce it one way for a while. Or, well, I don't know. I'll wait for him to reply, but yeah, dude, that belt looks fucking sweet. Yeah. That's, okay. that's a very nice belt. Yeah, dude, that... Uh, okay, uh, MSK's there. Like, I guess, like, my chat just isn't updating, then. Uh, too bad that if Barrett was given this, WWE would have rebooked the hot potato storyline for... Eh. I mean, wait, do you, did you really expect fucking Barrett to get over with the King gimmick if Seamus didn't? With his shitty fucking Loki horns? <laughs> like, come on. That dude. was so dumb. Um, no one's getting over with the King of the Ring gimmick in fucking 2015. <coughs> Regal. <laughs> dude, that was 2008. I know, and that was the best thing ever. Cause yeah, and Regal fucking owned it. So the only thing that was he he was so he he I wish he didn't get a drug of, um I wish he didn't get a strike on the wellness policy because then he well, would have been. He did. He did. It was uh, uh, high enzymes in his liver because I think he had MRSA. One second. Duh, Jay. Fucking Sheamus. That was meant to bury Sheamus. The uh, King of the Ring thing. Like, that's why they gave him that fucking crappy crown and had Morrison go over him on, like, every occasion. fucking gimmick ever. And it sucks because Sheamus is pretty cool. I'm sure. He's a decent big guy. I, I won't say he's amazing, but he's good enough that you he can hold... Your fucking like of, attention for an extended yeah, period of time, like you know? Of, yeah, yeah, like a lot of people are like, oh my god, this match is boring as fuck, but like, especially tonight when he was facing Randy Orton, it's like, dude, I'm fucking <laughs> entertained. Or I don't know what the fuck I, you're watching. I, I ended up watching a little bit of that, and yeah, no, that was fucking entertaining it, for two guys that the it, IWC want, likes to shit on all over and go, oh, they're so bad, oh, roid monkeys, oh, they're still fucking great, like, they it, can work together. It was a pretty <laughs> fun, like, I know they face each other a lot, but it's just like, dude, I had fun with that match, I don't know what the fuck you were watching, like, Maybe it went on a little bit too long okay. for you or whatever, but, like, come on, dude. Like, I'd rather watch that shit than stay up until fucking 
five in the morning and watch some Japanese people fucking wrestle. Well, you know what? You know what? I was gonna say. You know what else is a little too long? My dick. But you don't hear anybody in this chat fucking complaining. All right. Exactly. Um, I have to. <laughs> Ever. I love how Gamebox is just like. Um. Yeah. Zach. I... No. No. It, it's not that. I have to. I have to work in seven hours. So. Oh, um, so you're not gonna be able to uh, indulge in the fucking overrated Japan fucking bullshit. No. Japanation. If... No, if anything, if oh you want Sack, if you want Sack, you can carry this over to your stream. Uh, yeah. you Here's want to, Elface? Yeah, I'll fucking continue. Okay. okay um, All right. So, just one more question for everybody: What was your favorite match in 2014? Oh man! Fuck. And, and there's only one answer. Well, it's not a <laughs> Japanese match. I can fucking tell you that much. No Japs allowed. Not in my book, man. Yeah, Replic got it. <laughs> what might Replic say? Because I left the chat. The WLC match. <laughs> no, that, you know what? That was unironically a good match. That's what's it's funny. The, unironically, that was actually a really good match. What the fucking sad thing is, a lot of people don't give Torito credit. He's one of the best wrestlers in the world right now. So fuck, he's one of the best luchadors, and ah, oh, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, yeah, they're silly, they're, they're midgets, and midgets are kind of silly and cute, but at the same time, it was a fucking great match that actually had, like, it was good. It was good. Yeah. It's the only fucking positive I can give to Hornswoggle. Damn. Wow. It, remember when he became the gator for a little bit? Oh, yeah, fuck <laughs> that. I'd rather I, not. Well, I mean, I don't watch Raw or fucking main event, so... Nah. Alright. It's on uh, Botchamania. People chanted, this is boring. Well, fuck oh. Matthew from Botchamania. I know. I yeah. fucking hate that British cunt. He's not funny. What he does isn't fucking actual editing. The Invasion podcast is above him in what they do. <laughs> Which is actually edit shit together. Okay. Matthew, all he does is get fucking clips from random ass people and then fucking tries to string it together with some shitty ass video game music. It's like, hey, Matthew, like, I like the fucking Simon's theme from fucking Castlevania, Super Castlevania 4, but guess what? I'm not gonna fucking watch your bullshit. And nor am I going to support your shitty ass Patreon, you fucking British piece of shit. Support my Patreon. Support my Patreon. You yeah. get, uh, you're, support you're, you're, my Patreon. Like, support no. my Patreon because all your money goes to me nutting on pictures of random supermodels. Please support my Patreon because all it's going towards is me fucking buying tea and crumpets and all this shit. Yeah, support. Because guess what? <laughs> I, watch, I watch Downton Abbey and fucking the French people have to fucking turn off their power so we can watch that shit. Well, guess what? <laughs> I don't give a shit about Downton Abbey. I don't give a shit about the British people. Fuck you, British people. Elface does not like people. the British people. <laughs> so, I don't, man. Support my I'll save. <laughs> I'll save children, but not the British children. <laughs> so That's all cool, if you get that reference. I I, I I get I do get it. <laughs> uh, support yeah. support my Alberto Del Patron. Yeah. Where That's the fuck did Alberto Del Patron? By the way, um, um no, has I been AAA? So, yeah, they heard from him. He, they said he just couldn't make that show, which sucks because oh. it supports autism and it's like <laughs> I'm all for supporting. <laughs> Del Rio hates autism. <laughs> Hey, I, apparently. <laughs> I am apparently not a, uh, apparently well, Del Rio's maybe, not a fan of me. Maybe Del Rio was putting autism in an arm bar in his hometown. Okay. I don't, I don't know. But, yeah, uh, Game Box has to go. He's got to work, so we're yeah. probably so, going to shift over to yeah. Secret okay. to Stream, or he'll so, do something. Um, most people here probably know about the Invasion Podcast. It's pro it's me, Pitt, who was here Nobody earlier. Knows but the Invasion Podcast, yeah. because people hate Pitt. Yeah, and, uh, uh -huh. and Slip, and he gets a lot of 
hate to. Um. <laughs> slip slip is a. They, they like the. I, just... I think people like the slip in game box dichotomy. They just don't like Pit. But Pit doesn't like the brown people, so it's fine. He, he no really. Also, Pit hates anime, so if you listen yeah. to the Invasion podcast, don't listen for Pit. Just listen okay. for Game Box and so, Slip. So the next episode does not feature Pit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you really just don't like Pit that fucking much. Yeah. Um, it, listen to this next episode especially. Yes. It, it will <laughs> feature a Mr. Deadpool. Yes. Ooh. And everybody loves Deadpool because, you know, just listen to Uptown Terry yes. Funk and, and you're a good to go, man. He has chosen the episode we have to do. Oh, that's great. like a pretty good mystery. Um, Evil shit is a mystery. I was gonna say! <laughs> I'll spoil it because it's been kind of spoiled out through Twitter. Uh, Bash at the Beach 2000. Oh, that, oh, that, no. that could be pretty rough. Because I think I've watched it before yeah. and it's not a yeah. great. Um, one thing I will keep a surprise: I managed to get an intro from somebody. Ooh. I'll post there it in the Skype chat, people. and surprise. it will be awesome. So, okay, there you have, go. have a nice day, guys. Um, you guys can start another See call. Head over to Suppress okay. the Stream. Okay, we're going. Yep. Boy, I'll host right. you guys too. Bye. Bye bye.